Hey guys, it's Dr. Justin Marcajani here. Today's show is gonna be on cholesterol. Does eating cholesterol increase your blood cholesterol levels? And I actually got some very recent lab tests of myself that we're gonna go over because I made a perfect testament based on how much cholesterol and fat I eat that you would think that, oh, if cholesterol causes high cholesterol, if eating it does, then you're gonna see it on my blood test, but you will be pleasantly surprised. And we'll go over that at the end. So off the bat, does dietary cholesterol increase your overall body blood cholesterol? The answer is no, it doesn't. And I've seen many, many patients in my practice that have actually been vegans and they have cholesterol through the roof. Wait a minute, how does that happen? How does not eating cholesterol increase your cholesterol? Well, here's the physiology 101. Here's your liver. We have these enzymes in our liver called the HMG-CoA reductase enzymes, hemomethaglutarate CoA reductase. This enzyme gets upregulated with insulin, that little plus next to insulin. So insulin levels will actually go, when insulin levels go up, it'll actually stimulate more production of cholesterol, internal cholesterol. About 90% of the cholesterol in your body is actually by cholesterol that your liver makes. So when you increase insulin, when you increase insulin, through refined carbohydrates, grains, or just too much carbs overall, we're not talking about veggie carbs, right? So let's cut those non-starchy ones out, but maybe excess fruit if you're already insulin resistant, excess starch, excess refined carbohydrate. And again, if you're healthy, your carbohydrate threshold may be a lot higher. You may be able to handle 300 grams of carbohydrates comfortably if you're doing CrossFit or exercising. If you're already insulin resistant, you already have a lot of insulin at a fasting level, maybe your insulin's well above 10 on a fasting insulin blood test, well, your carbohydrate threshold will be much lower, meaning you will not be able to handle much carbohydrate because the insulin that spits off basically is not gonna be able to pull that sugar, that glucose into your cell. So it sits in the bloodstream more and your body has to compensate by making more and more insulin, which can create inflammation, increase plaque in the brain. It can also do other things by causing cells to grow at an abnormal rate and predispose you of cancer. So high amounts of insulin is not good. So this insulin over here, this could be a little bit of insulin, maybe too much, maybe higher than 50 or 80 grams of carbohydrates, maybe too much for someone that's already insulin resistant. And someone that maybe is at 150 or 300, if they're active and already healthy, that may be okay. So this insulin, this plus here that I'm talking about is relative. If you're insulin resistant, close to the 50, maybe kind of the cutoff. If you're not insulin resistant and you're more active, then you have a lot more leeway. So when you see this over here, that's gonna be open to interpretation based on you and your functional medicine doctor based on what your labs say, based on kind of where you're at health-wise, and based on kind of where your waist to hip ratio is. Your tummy is gonna be a good measurement of your insulin meter. Also, things like glucagon actually decrease that enzyme. So what stimulates glucagon? It's good protein intake. Good protein intake will increase glucagon, which is a hormone that will use um, protein to stabilize your blood sugar. So good protein will actually decrease that enzyme, which decreases cholesterol. Typically, what's gonna be in a lot of that protein? Well, if it's animal protein, it, there will be cholesterol. So animal protein that actually has cholesterol can actually downregulate that HMG-CoA reductase enzyme by nature of it having the glucagon there right? That protein stimulating glucagon can have an effect on lowering your cholesterol. Pretty cool. So let's go over my labs here. So I eat about 60 to 70 percent fat a day. I start my day off with one and a half tablespoons of grass-fed butter, a tablespoon of MCT oil, and some collagen in my coffee, right? Really good butter coffee, lots of good fats, lots of good cholesterol. And actually this test wasn't even done fasting. When they came and drew the test at my house, I had had a whole bunch of fat in my coffee that morning, okay? And just to show you off the bat, my cholesterol on this test, so you can see Justin Marcajani, cholesterol was 199, and this wasn't even a fasting test. Look at my HDL, 51, right? Not bad, but when you look at my HDL to trig ratio, it's about 1.4, which is pretty good, 51 over 74, not bad, not bad. So the ratio is trig over HDL. So a one to one would be like 51 HDL, 51 trig. So I'm a little bit above that, which is still good. Less than two is good. And again, this wasn't even fasting. 
Look at my cholesterol to HDL ratio, 3.9, which is less than four, which is phenomenal. My LDL to HDL ratio is 2.61, which is great at the low end of the reference range. And I'm showing you this not to impress you, but to impress upon you that dietary cholesterol has very little impact. And this was not even a fasting test. So it's really important when people have high cholesterol, why is it? I want you to go back. What's the mechanism? It's typically because of excess insulin and also some of these factors down below that we hit in functional medicine land, dietary increase trans fats, increase refined carbohydrates, increase food allergens. Sometimes I see food allergens like eggs and dairy increasing it. So if you're already paleo and doing really good, look at cutting out potentially eggs and dairy. That could be an inflammatory vector that's driving up cholesterol. Because sometimes when these things aren't affected by the insulin, sometimes cholesterol can be high via inflammation. And then we have to think, what are the vectors of inflammation? So low thyroid function, thyroid hormone actually comes in here. So if here's cholesterol, if here's our cholesterol globule, let's get a good pen here. So if here's our cholesterol, and this is our cholesterol globule, cholesterol is the building block for all of our sex hormones. Really important. So part of how our body will break down cholesterol, it uses thyroid hormone and to break it down. And this becomes the building blocks of a lot of our hormones, right? And then all of our hormones then come from this. So we have our estrogen, we have our progesterone, we have our testosterone, we have our cortisol, Right, so we have our female hormones, we have our male hormones, and we have our stress hormones. And we can even put our, our mineral corticoids here as well, like aldosterone, right? It would help with mineral regulation. So you can see here, thyroid hormone breaks down the cholesterol and the cholesterol then can go to all these different things. So if we have decrease, put a little minus here, if we have decrease, thyroid hormone, it's possible that these all can go down as well. And this actually can go up, it's a bottleneck. And people knew this in the 80s, medical doctors were prescribing thyroid hormone in the early 80s before statins were mainstream to actually knock down cholesterol. And having used thyroid hormone with hundreds of patients, I have run pre and post-op cholesterol tests pre and post thyroid hormone, I've seen up to 30%, 40% reductions just by adding in thyroid hormone. And again, we're not adding in thyroid hormone if the person doesn't need it. We see a need for it. We're fixing the underlying physiological imbalances to begin with, but then we look at the cholesterol and see, hey, this is a significant reduction there. So iron overload, right? Hemochromatosis or elevated iron, especially in men, this is an issue because men aren't menstruating, so they can collect excess iron. So giving blood a couple times a year can help that. And of course, inflammation. Inflammation could be heavy metal toxicity. It could be excess pesticide exposure. It could be just you're not getting enough sleep. You're up super, super late. You're working too hard. You're not getting enough um, downtime. You're exercising, you're crossfitting too hard. All of these things can drive vectors. Obviously, increased gut inflammation, increased stomach infections, unresolved gut infections can easily drive that too. Infections can easily cause cholesterol to go up. And the reason why is because Cholesterol is an important building block for your hormones, which help and have an impact on your immune system. So guys, I hope you enjoy the video. Smash the subscribe button down below and give me a hit. Hit that little bell there. That bell helps get you alerts. YouTube is not giving people alerts. If you just subscribe, you gotta subscribe and hit that bell. So I'll wait a minute, I'll let you subscribe. Hit that bell. All right, great, I'm feeling the love. All right, guys, I look forward to getting you some more content out your way. I appreciate it. Give me some comments below. I want to know what your thoughts are. I want to know what you think. I want to look at your questions, answer them if I have time as well. And if you need more help or more support in this area, click down below and schedule an appointment with myself and or my colleagues so we can look at your case, dive in deep, and figure out what the next steps for you are to get better. Again, this is Dr. Justin signing off. Have a great day.